Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today we're looking at regular video game enemies that are tough to put down, whether it be due to their durability or combat tactics. Before we begin, we publish new content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Shambhala Guardians Uncharted 2 Among Thieves What is this? As Drake, his allies, and his enemies reach the mystical city of Shambhala, they all come into conflict with its residents. Turns out, they're extremely protective of their home and have used the Tree of Life's sap to increase their strength and stamina. And that spells bad news for everyone. What are those things? Hard to kill, that's what. I know, right? What are we supposed to do? Any ideas? The Shambhala Guardians are your classic late-game bullet sponges. You can unload a full clip into one, and it'll still be bounding your way. They also come equipped with powerful crossbows, able to put you down in mere moments. As problematic as these Guardians are, it's still fun seeing them rip through your enemies. Dry Bones Super Mario Series These Koopa skeletons may not look like much, and they're far from the most aggressive enemy, but their durability is honestly impressive. No matter how many times Mario jumps on its head, causing the body to crumble, Dry Bones will always get back up after a few seconds. First appearing in Super Mario Bros. 3, the only way to permanently destroy one was to use a Star or Hammer Bros. suit, both pretty rare to come across. They've gotten both easier and harder to deal with, depending on the game. The inclusion of the Ice Flower in the new Super Mario Bros. series was a godsend, but in Galaxy, you could only use a star or lure it into a trap using the environment. <laughs> Juggernauts, Call of Duty series. We've all been there. You're being swarmed by enemies, and out comes one of the big guns. You pour buckets of bullets into them, and yet they still won't go down. That's your experience with the Juggernauts from Call of Duty. Although they're encountered in many games, those found in the Modern Warfare series are by far the worst. They carry their cover with them in the form of some of the strongest body armor around. Depending on the game, some can even be more heavily armored and wield miniguns. Whether it be in Special Ops Survival or just the campaign, the Juggernauts will test your patience and surely test your mettle. Chrysalids, XCOM 2. Developer Firaxis Games increased the difficulty in this sequel in numerous ways. One of the most obvious was in the Chrysalid enemy, made significantly stronger over its predecessor. Similar to the first game, Chrysalids can infect any organic matter, whether it be a civilian or a member of your team. This forms a cocoon, which will spawn up to three new Chrysalids and cause players to be overwhelmed through sheer force. The way in which they used the battlefield was also improved. They can leap to tall buildings, move with alarming speed, and can burrow underground. Their burrow ability makes them much harder to hit and gives them a chance to ambush you even if it's your turn. Trimmer Tusks, Horizon Forbidden West. Aloy has to battle a multitude of tough machines along her adventures. A special shout-out goes to the Rock Breaker, which hides underground and surprises you from below. It's a pain. As troublesome as that is, Forbidden West gave us the walking bulldozers that are the Trimmer Tusks. These mammoth-inspired enemies naturally dwarf Aloy in size, and they've got the defensive and offensive capabilities to match. Fatigue. 
physical attacks both short and long range, as well as fire, plasma, and electric attacks, give it a wide range of ways to annihilate you. It may be slow, but its sturdy armor plates make up for this downside. Even if you manage to destroy one of its weak points, the Trimmer Tusk will not be dissuaded. <laughs> Berserkers, Gears of War series. A berserker. She can hear us. She can smell us. The Locust Horde is an intimidating force, to be sure but some of its members definitely hit harder than others. Berserkers are the less common female variant of a locust drone, and they are far more powerful than their male counterparts. These enemies may be blind, but their heightened smell and hearing makes that a non-issue. They also get their name from the fact that they're in a constant state of rage and will come barreling towards any foe like a freight train. <laughs> Try and shoot it all you want. Its skin is extremely resistant to gunfire. Any weapon that emits flame will weaken them for further damage, but other than that, best of luck. How about we never do that again? Yeah, that works for me. Red Aramers, Ghosts and Goblins series. Capcom's Ghosts and Goblins series consists of some of the most challenging platformers ever made. Most of the enemies are ruthless, but chief among them is the Red Aramer. These winged demons like to fly high above poor Arthur, swiftly diving down on him with little chances to defend himself. Depending on which power-up you have equipped, they'll probably be extremely hard to hit and likely take more than one shot to go down. But as Arthur can only be hit twice before its curtains, these so-called regular enemies seem more powerful than you. Since these games don't usually offer a way to save, we approach every red armor with the utmost caution. Noken, God of War Ragnarok. You hear that? It's always cool seeing how God of War adapts mythological figures and monsters to suit its gameplay, but Sony could have left this thing buried in the annals of history and we would have been completely okay with it. The Noken are some of the physically weakest enemies in the game, but they never travel alone, boosting their allies so that they instantly heal from whatever blow you deal them. Though you can hear them chanting to perform this skill, they're also usually hiding. All it takes is one encounter with an endlessly healing ogre, courtesy of this little gremlin, to make you lose your cool. And gods help you when it's boosting a group of enemies. Nothing good can come up this noise. Death Claws, Fallout series. There are a great many predators roaming the wasteland of Fallout, but the Deathclaws are of the Apex variety. While they're not quite so bad in some games, if you come across one in 3 or New Vegas, it's probably best you keep your distance. That's a whole lot easier said than done, however, as they tend to move blindingly fast. They're also extremely durable, soaking up most bullets as you can spray their way. Unfortunately, they aren't usually found alone either, so you'll likely have a pack to deal with at a time. Of course, you can always take the necessary precautions in enhancing your character and weapons to make them easier, but that takes supreme preparation. Twitchers. Dead Space series. Ah! 
Anyone familiar with the Dead Space series knows you must always try to keep necromorphs at arm's length, because they will absolutely make you regret it if you don't. Therefore, one that moves ridiculously fast is bound to be an issue. It's entirely likely that a twitcher will dodge most of your gunfire before it reaches you. It's this erratic and unpredictable movement that makes them so hard to kill. However, when it bears down upon you, it will proceed to slice and dice off chunks of your health bar before you can even think. It's one of the most vicious necromorph variants in the game, which is saying quite a lot. Marauders, Doom Eternal. Throughout the Doom series, players have taken on countless hordes of vile demons. Yet it wasn't until 2020's Eternal that they were introduced to the toughest enemy in the series. Once Night Sentinels, the Marauders were resurrected and turned demonic. Since they originally belonged to the same group of heroes as you, that means they'll have a lot of nifty tricks to make your life hell. My eyes have been open. Let me help you to see, Slayer. They've got a variety of attacks for different ranges, can summon a wolf, and are either immune to or resistant against several of your weapons. Furthermore, there's only a brief window when they're open to attack, which just so happens to be in the middle of a lunge. Brilliant. Fakas, Zelda 2: The Adventure of Link. When Lynels transitioned to 3D in Breath of the Wild, Nintendo gave them a significant boost in power. But let's be real, if the Fakas are ever given an update, we're all doomed. So far, these capable bird knights have only been seen in Zelda 2, a notoriously tough entry in the series. They are also only found in the final dungeon, but they're definitely a quality over quantity type of foe. They act similar to Iron Knuckles, except that they can also jump and shoot beams from their swords. They're also beefy enough to survive the Thunder Spell, which normally kills all normal enemies on a screen. Both the red and blue variants deal heavy damage to Link, but the latter has twice as much health. Revenants, Elden Ring. Each From Software release overflows with enemies that are a pain to kill, and the revenants of Elden Ring are no different. Looking like a twisted combination of human and spider, they certainly showcase the developer's traditionally unnerving design. But what makes them harder to deal with than other enemies is their ability to teleport. If there's more than one around you, another will almost certainly pop up behind you. Their elongated bodies make dodging and escaping nigh impossible. Many players have declared Revenants the game's most hated enemy for good reason. Thankfully, the AoE of your healing spells can actually damage them. It's fitting, considering they'll make you need to heal a lot. Malboro, Final Fantasy series. These overgrown plant monsters are one of the oldest enemies in Final Fantasy, having first appeared in the second ever installment. Sometimes bosses, sometimes not, they've only grown more annoying over the years. Originally, some of their attacks could cause different status ailments. However, they quickly gained what would become their signature ability, Bad Breath.
This is almost always a Malboro's opening attack, which will give your party members several status effects at once. If it weren't for this, they may not be so bad to deal with, but since you're forced to spend your opening moves getting rid of these ailments, that leaves you open to further attacks. If we never came across one of these again, it would be too soon. Tanks, Left for Dead series. The Left for Dead games offer hours of multiplayer mayhem, with legions of undead to mow through and special classes of infected to keep things fresh. The tank is certainly the most resilient of these variants, as he's essentially what would happen if the Hulk was bitten by a zombie. You may be doing your best to survive when, all of a sudden, you'll hear a mighty roar that signals he's about to stampede through everything and everyone. There's little you can do to keep from being knocked to the ground, and it usually takes a team's combined efforts to be able to put this big boy down. Shark Giants Bloodborne Shark Giants may only be found in the Old Hunters DLC, and there may only be a handful of them. But they do exceptional work with what little time they're given. And by exceptional work, I mean pummeling you into the dirt with ease. These lumbering foes only need to land a couple of hits before you're nothing more than fish food. Their attacks include a charged slide, which covers a ton of ground and is extremely hard to dodge, and a grapple where they eat you whole. Naturally, their health pool is much larger than yours, and you'll probably just spend your time chipping away. It's just as intimidating as a fight against a massive humanoid shark should be. Emmy. Metroid Dread. It's never a good time when robots turn evil. Samus Aran may be a badass space bounty hunter, but even she has a rough go with the Emmy. These specialized bots are sent by the Galactic Federation to planet ZDR to investigate the return of a deadly parasite. Unfortunately, they're corrupted to attack you, and they're highly durable. Only by charging her arm cannon at special locations does Samus earn the power to dispose of them. However, each subsequent one comes equipped with a more troublesome ability, like the yellow Emmy's immense speed or the blue one's ability to freeze you. Their environments also get trickier to navigate as you fight to survive. Banshees, Mass Effect 3. The Banshees of Irish folklore sound like they'd be incredibly hard to deal with but we'd honestly take our chances with those instead of the ones found in Mass Effect 3. They have some of our least favorite enemy skills in video games, including a possible one-hit kill and the ability to teleport. Of course, like the mythological figures, they also wail, producing an AoE blast. This is a perfect time for them to regenerate their shield since you can't get too close to them, which they will frequently do. It's no wonder they're always found leading a Reaper Strike Force. We'd put them in charge too. That's the last one. For now. Big Daddies. Bioshock. There were many things about Bioshock that impressed players, from its mind-bending story, to its addictive gameplay, to the iconic Big Daddies. 
These behemoths are physically altered to be immensely strong and psychologically trained to protect little sisters. It's highly likely you'll come across one long before you can handle it. And if you try, the Big Daddy will show surprising speed for his size and promptly turn you into mush. Being both a sponge for bullets and your powerful plasmids, each one will eat a lot of your resources before it finally shuffles off this mortal coil. Just make sure you've got a lot of room to maneuver before taking these baddies on. Regenerators, Resident Evil 4. The zombies of Resident Evil are surprisingly durable for rotting corpses. Crimson heads from the first game's remake may look like normal undead, but are much stronger and faster. Regenerators from the fourth game, however, are even worse. They may still be slow moving, but they're usually found in cramped spaces. As befits their name, they can regenerate limbs, which means your knife and small firearms will basically be useless. You'll spend precious grenades and shotgun shells on these jerks, unless you use the rifle's thermal scope to see their weak points. Even still, one of its weak points may be on its back, forcing you to move behind it. No matter how you do it, these suckers put up a mighty fight. <laughs> 